Welcome back to the Elevate Everyday Podcast here with my trusty co-host, Herb Tanton. And we're, we're talking about, we got another series for you guys. This is our muscle series. So how to build muscle, hypertrophy, part one. And to get right into it, why is muscle important? So Herb, I'll let you kind of start this off. Like why, why is it important to have more muscle? Well, so the longevity part of it is the, the more muscle you have, technically, the healthier you are. Your immune systems are stronger. And, you know, uh, my biggest focus the last 10 years has been recovery, longevity. As they get a little bit older, <clears throat> I still want to do this sport. Um, I'm starting to realize now that more muscle equals longer longevity. I mean, they're even showing where people with more muscle mass have lower rates of cancer. So when we say muscle is healthy, it's not just looks good. It, it's functional, but it also adds to our immune system. And it just adds to our overall um, longevity. So muscle is extremely important. And again, when you're talking muscle, it's not just the biceps and the chest and stuff. It's all your muscles, your organs, your skin, everything. So being healthy starts with good protein. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And with with your kind of point on longevity, I feel like people look at me and, <laughs> you know, I'm 30 years old and that's that's part of a benefit, I feel like, of having you on the team. It's like, you know, older people are like, well, I don't want to be, you know, I'm not going to be a bodybuilder or, or, you know, it's just lifting all the weight in the gym like you. It's like, well, no, this is like good for your long-term actual health. Like it's, it's not, you don't have to be a bodybuilder or a power lifter, like to work on strength and building muscle. It's like, this is good for you long-term. It's going to, uh, like you said, help with your immune system, um, your metabolism, which is what I was going to kind of dive into. Um, so, so yeah, so it's like the more muscle you have, the more calories you burn at rest. So I like to call it, I've kind of coined this term. I don't know if I've, if anyone else has said this, but I, I always say this like passive fat burning. So it's like the more muscle you have, the more calories you burn doing nothing. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, you, you can basically it. start with one pound of muscle. You're going to burn 50 calories a day being alive. Yeah. So theoretically young lady, if we can put on 10 pounds of muscle, you're going to burn five hundred extra calories a day just being alive that's a pound a week or four pounds a month by putting on 10 pounds of muscle and you didn't do anything yet yeah. so yes muscle is the key yeah yeah what are what are some common myths that you've heard around like build muscle that you hear well it, because i've mostly worked with uh female population the first thing i hear is man you know real herb i don't i don't want to get those 20 inch arms <laughs> you know i don't i don't want to get too big and bulky and I'm like, sweetie, I'm killing myself trying to get big and bulky and it doesn't work that way, right? So the misconception that it's going to be easy. Yeah. Now, theoretically, it's, I wouldn't say the word is easy. It's sensible because we're supposed to have muscle. We're supposed to be somebody that's out there, you know, hunting, gathering, building things, knocking things down, not sitting on a phone with our little thumbs getting cramped up. So yeah, it's, it's, it's something that I think everybody needs to experience and make that decision for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually hilarious because yeah. <laughs> building, building muscle is actually pretty hard, right? Like it's uh, putting on, like you said, in that example, like 10 pounds of muscle, I like that's that's a pretty hard, long process, but the difference it makes to your physique and your health is so drastic, right? So that's why it's worth going through that process but yeah, it's crazy to think like, yeah, I'm just going to go in, start lifting and, and be a bodybuilder. And like, <laughs> that's not what I want. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I always hear that too. So um, yeah, any, anything else as far as myths, anything you hear well, from like older clients or anything like that? Yeah, older people, they're, they're afraid to get started. They're afraid that, oh, I missed my window. I, you know, there's nothing I can do at this age. There's, you know, and, and, I, and I, I'm a proponent of working out at least twice a week. Okay, three is like a magic number. But I was actually reading a study where they were showing um, people over the age of 60 working out once a week made a huge difference. Yeah. You know, so it's not like you got to be in the gym every day. You know, you and I are because we're just crazy, you know, and we're in the sport part of it. But, you know, your kids play football, your kids play soccer, you know, they play after school, they have fun, they do their thing. They're not out there seven days a week and in the rain training in the mud because they're a professional. So there's different levels of, you know, uh, the gym rat that you can be, you know, yeah. we're just yeah. talking about general health and longevity. You need to put on some muscle in the story. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen some studies recently too on like, yeah, people always say 
I'm too old to put on muscle now. It's like, no, like if you get serious and you, you start doing things that you haven't been doing, like you can make a drastic difference and, and put on 10, 20 pounds of muscle if you've never really been someone that's been a, a gym goer. So, yeah. 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 You can lower your, 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 you know, your diabetic conditions. You, I mean, it's just an overall better feel good, sleep better, you know, better sex, better longevity, better energy, just better, you know, a lot of people nowadays, and I think, and I haven't really read about this, I'll get your opinion. I think a lot of people are suffering from the quote unquote brain fog mm -hmm. uh, of just everyday life because they're just on that wheel like a rat and they're taking, they're working for somebody else, building their business, taking care of somebody else's business, but they're not taking care of themselves. Yeah. There's a, there's a huge rush of adrenaline that you get above and beyond everything else. When you walk out of that gym going, I fucking just put in a great workout for me. I'm going to benefit from that because I'm going to go eat some good food. And then as a result, I live longer. I'm healthier. Yeah. Right. So again, I think it, it, it's something that I think is going to be making a huge turn here in the future. I think a lot of people are going to, after COVID and everything, we need to work on our immune system and some longevity. It's not going to happen accidentally. Yeah. Yeah. One myth that kind of popped in my head while you were saying some of that stuff. Um, you know, I think a lot of people will say they just throw out they throw this out that like your goals are 90% nutrition. I think that's a little bit overblown, right? Your the nutrition is a huge part of things, but if you're wanting to put on muscle, like you have to be adding a certain amount of stimulus in the gym to drive muscle growth, right? So it is a big piece of the puzzle. I think a lot of people say it's it's 90% nutrition, right? All I got to do is change my diet. Well, no, we, we also need to make sure that we're getting sufficient volume per, per muscle group. Um, and it's really not that much, like you said, two, three days a week, if you're doing the right stuff, you can make that happen, but, you know, train with a certain level of intensity to drive that muscle growth. You know, those are big factors as well. Um, well, so just, it, it is food, but yeah. here's the thing, Kate, you and I prep our food for the week. Now what? My yeah. food is done. I'm prepped. I don't have to worry about food anymore. I'll pick it up and eat it when I'm hungry. The hard part is getting my ass to the gym now yeah. and giving some intensity and tearing down that muscle tissue. So that food is going to be used for what I intended it for. So yeah, the food is very important, but once you get that out of the way, guys, don't, don't tell me that's your problem. Yeah. It's done. It's in the freezer. I'm done with my food. How about the gym? Are you getting to the gym? Right. Yeah. Are you getting there earlier? Are you warming up? Are you just hitting the weights? Cause a lot of guys, they get to the gym and then they just rush out there and get hurt. Yeah. So people have got to learn to structure things a little better. Yeah. Right? How yeah. come people can show up on to work on time everything else on time, but when they go, oh, I'm a little late for the gym. So you're going to be on time for everybody else, but you're going to put yourself on the back burner and be late for you. That's, yeah. that's unacceptable. Yeah. That's a really good point. <laughs> but yeah, so let's, let's lead into on that point, like a couple of the main drivers in the gym that causes muscle growth. So, um, you know, mechanical tension and time under tension, I'll kind of lump those under the same thing. So, just so you guys kind of know what that means. It just means like adding tension, right? Like at, adding resistance to your muscles. Like that's, what's going to drive that muscle growth. So, and it, and it doesn't have to be free weights. I think a lot of people think I need to build muscle. I got to use barbells. You know, obviously they're a good tool, but it can be machines. It can be resistance bands. It can be body weight. It's anything that's adding tension to the muscles. So just on that little point there of that being one of the main drivers of muscle growth, anything to expand on your end, Herb? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Time under tension is very important. So from what I can see, I like to have at least 40 to 50, maybe even 60 seconds of attention on a set. So again, if you're doing, you know, a three second or uh, eccentric, and then you explode and do a one, you're doing four, four second reps, you do 10 reps, you're doing 40 seconds, right? So you can kind of keep attention on that. But what people do is, for example, chest, once you get to a certain spot on uh, pushing the bar up, now your triceps and shoulders kick in. Well, your triceps and shoulders are going to give out before your chest does. So are you really done when you can't do another one? No, you're done with the little muscles. So at the end of a set, you stay at the full stretch position, which we'll talk about stretch overload, and you exhaust the muscle that you're intending to. People don't do that. They don't go into the gym with specific designed exercises to destroy. They just go into three sets of 12. Yeah. Yep. Maybe you could have done three sets of 30 or three sets of 10. Yeah, it, who knows if that was enough, right? But you have to have intention. And we do that with our clients. You already know that we always say leave one or two reps in the tank. I guarantee if somebody's leaving two, they're leaving six. 
right? Yeah. You got to get that intensity up there because without muscle damage, that food that you spent hours preparing isn't going to do as much good as you think it should. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, you always say this, you're always like, <clears throat> the hardest part is getting there. And I completely agree. It's, and then you get to the gym and you see people and you're like, you did the hardest thing of getting here and you're half-assing that workout. <laughs> it's like texting your girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So guys like this mechanical tension, what's, what's really going to drive that muscle growth is like Herb said, like having good form and having good tempo, but also like having that intensity near failure. Cause if you're five plus reps in the tank on some of these sets, like you're really not doing that much, you know, it's, it's get to that point where you do have that intensity level that you're a couple reps away from failure or even near failure than that. Um, that's what's really going to drive building muscle. So, um, any other kind of things to point out as far as mechanical tension, time under tension goes on your and her? No, I just, I, I think that's the number one focus when you're designing a program. Yeah. I know you do the same thing. Yeah. When you're designing a program. And we don't usually tell the person, this is what we were thinking when we designed the program. Yeah. It's too much for them. Like a little bit of information overload. Yeah. But everything is based on how much tension can I put on this muscle for how much time? Yeah. And if I'm doing that properly, how many sets do I need? How many reps do I need? You know, I love it when I run into a guy in the gym with a moderately good physique and he's like, yeah, I do 25 sets for chest. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing for the first 20 sets? There's no, there's no way you can do more than 10 or 12. You're going to, your head's going to explode Yeah. <laughs> if you're really doing it. Right. right? Yeah. So again, it's, you're lifting steel, you're lifting heavy weights, you're lifting shit that doesn't want to move. Yeah. It should wear you out. Guys. You should be yeah. like sweating and trying to figure out what's going on and you know like we talked about last night chalking up your hands and get ready for battle yeah. if you want the results you got to put the time in yeah 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 and we'll i'm going to save um the stretch overload that you alluded to and kind of the rep ranges part overload of the conversation team. for for another podcast yeah um, but wanted to talk about progressive overload in this one because you know mechanical tension time under tension but then progressive overload is one of the main drivers of muscle growth. So, man, I see people go in the gym. They do the same thing for months. They stick with the same weight. They're not logging their workouts. Guys, like you're already getting in there, putting in the work. Like take that little bit of extra time to make sure that you're going up each workout because <laughs> that's what's driving the muscle growth. It's not just going through the motions, doing the same things week in, week out. Like go in, log what you're doing, either add reps or weight, or you can even add time under tension, right? You can make it harder tempos or stuff like that. But there's so many different ways to progressively overload, but you got to make sure that you're tracking it and that you're doing that to drive that muscle growth. So what, what's your kind of perspective on that, Herb? Exactly. When you go, when you're in the gym, when you have a program, it's a map and it's not a map of one little city. You're spending all your freaking time in one little city. You're traveling. So like you said, once you start, you've got to progress, right? Um, my shoulders are killing me. It's lifting too heavy. Okay, I'll increase the reps and lower the weight, right? I want to get a little stronger and not worry about hypertrophy right now. Let's get down to three and five reps and just crush this, right? You have to be progressively moving forward in anything in life, definitely with the weights, right? To make yourself get better. The whole idea of working out is you're telling your body you better adapt to what we're doing. Your body's like, I'm good, I'm adapting. And then you're like, okay, I'm changing, adapt again. I'm changing, adapt again. Then your body's just going to give up and say, fine, just feed me and I'll be a beast and I'll be ready to do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And then you go do your workouts. But you've got to constantly be moving forward or you're just, like you said, I'm in the gym doing a circuit. Worst thing you could possibly do is go to a gym and do a circuit workout. <laughs> Yeah. You know, well, when, it's like well, driving home and texting people. You don't even realize what you're doing. You're just on autopilot. Yeah. Yeah. One, one thing that popped in my head when you said that is, man, Orange Theory, I think, ingrained this into people's mind that you, you need to do a different workout every single time you go in. That's mm -hmm. actually like one of the worst things you can do because then you can't track the stuff that you're doing. So we, we like to keep our clients, you know, four to six weeks doing the same movements and making sure we're progressing on those movements yeah. to give enough time to do that. And the research shows every four to six weeks, you really start to adapt to what you're doing. So it's time to kind of switch things up, add a new stimulus and then progress back up. Um, so hundred percent. Yeah. So, um, we don't need to beat a dead horse on that one. I think everyone gets the point on that. Um, but um, we'll go ahead and leave this one pretty short and sweet. That's kind of the first episode, mostly talking about, you know, 
what why muscle is important again um, some common myths mechanical tension time under tension and the progressive overload the next episode we're going to be talking about um, the nutrition side of things even though we said you know it's it's probably not 90 percent like people say but it is a big portion of building mm-hmm. muscle and, or any any of the goals that you have right so we're gonna be talking about some of that the nutrition aspect of building muscle and some key principles there um and then there'll be a third episode where we talk kind of just we'll, we'll leave that for the second episode to allude to that but um but join into that next one for the nutrition side of things uh, let us know if you got any questions comment if you think i should keep this mustache or go ahead and shave it off herb keeps talking trash about it um, but i'm sticking to my guns <laughs> i'm gonna let it i'm gonna let it go for a little bit see what we can do here um other than that guys we'll see you in the next episode And in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Peace. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.